Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to Trade Chat. My name is Panzer and I am here with some of the World of Warcraft developers. Introduce yourselves, gentlemen. My name is Jeremy Fiesel. I'm a senior game designer. And I'm Frank Kolakowski. I'm the assistant technical director on World of Warcraft. You guys did a lot of the work on islands for Battle for Azeroth, correct? Yep. We, uh, we are hard at work on island expeditions. We've been working on that team for well over a year now. Uh, right about the last BlizzCon, we had actually been working for quite a significant number of months already. There's a lot of cool tech here to talk about. <laughs> you know? That, there probably is, but a lot of the questions that my viewers had weren't necessarily related to islands, because we did get a lot of info about them. We know a lot. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to doing those on live servers. They seem like I, I'm really excited about it. Me too. <laughs> um, so my first question has to do with solo content. Sure. And do you think that there would be a chance of like solo island expeditions? Uh, well, I think that the, the goal of the island expedition, tuning-wise, is to make sure that it's fun for a role agnostic group of three different players. Uh, the idea that there is a space that you're exploring, that you don't know what's going to be there, and you're kind of off on your own and solo is super cool, and it's one of the reasons why we're very excited about this technology moving yeah. forward. But for this particular feature, what we wanted to make sure was that it was tuned appropriately for three players, okay. and also very easy to get into group yeah. content. That's not to say that you can't queue solo and have yeah. a really good time, and one of the most recent things that we did on the alpha was make sure that that normal difficulty had an appropriate level of explorative feel for that kind of player. Um, we have a number of different knobs we can tune there. One of the major ones was making sure that the AI took longer to show up on the island so that you felt less pressure and you felt like you could do a little bit more solo exploration. All right, that's really interesting. Now on the same kind of solo topic, um, are there any plans to implement like a solo challenge like the Mage Tower was in Legion? We thought the Mage Tower was super cool and very successful. Some players are still doing it as, you know, we're getting to the end of the expansion. It's one of those kind of cool, I gotta get this done before the expansion's done features. Uh, though we don't have any plans for what we're gonna do for that kind of system for Battle for Azeroth yet. The Mage Tower, you know, came online yeah. kind of halfway through the expansion. It's 7-2, I think. Yeah. Um, so, nothing to talk about quite yet, although it's we, we thought it went really well and it's definitely something we'll be looking at. Yeah, just to build on what Jeremy said, all types of people play World of Warcraft. Sometimes I'm in the mood to, to kind of go off on myself, complete the Mage Tower Challenge, for instance, but uh, a lot of other times I might have a small group of people, something like Islands makes a lot of sense, and then sometimes my guild's online, we want to go raiding. So we, we do want to kind of have a lot of content that's balanced around like not just an individual's choices, but what an indi individual may be able to do at any given time based on, you know, well, who's I, online. I really love all the features in, in Battle for Azeroth that involve, you know, you're going to be able to do your solo stuff, you're also going to have groups of three now, then there's, you know, your dungeons mm -hmm. at groups of five, you've got the war fronts, which is 20, and then the raids is flexible, unless you're in Mythic, it feels like it's much more uh, welcoming for guilds and player groups of all sizes, as opposed to previously when it was 10 man, 20 man, mm -hmm. or 10 man, 25 man. So I think that's really great. Um, Go ahead, I'm sorry. In general, as we've been crafting new features for Battle for Azeroth, that's something that we want to be very sensitive to, is the fact that people from all different group sizes and all different group makeups play World of Warcraft, and was one of the driving features behind trying to make, say, Islands role agnostic, Warfronts role agnostic, let anybody who is a solo player of any class get in there with an instantaneous queue. Yeah. Um, last one on solo, I promise. Uh, <laughs> are there any planned updates for the Brawlers Guild? in Battle for Azeroth? You know, it's not something we want to speak to quite yet, but we have some cool ideas. Oh. Uh, just, you know, look forward into the future. There's a lot of really interesting ideas centered around, uh, say, Brawler's Guild or you know, very similar kind of solo content that other people get to watch. Oh, interesting. Uh, um, now, okay, this was, this was something that was brought up in my guild. Like, we have two raid groups. We have one group that runs Mythic, and then we have one group that runs Heroic. It's a little more casual. And, you know, as the expansion gets closer, we're dwindling in numbers, but we're still kind of doing the content at the same rate. Have, has there been any consideration of, like, Mythic Plus style modifiers on raids? Specifically for someone like, like my guild, where we're at the point where we're just repeating the same content over again. We don't have anywhere near enough people for Mythic, even if we wanted to, for our second group but maybe something that yeah, added sure. a little variation or challenge to raids at that point. So something to just kind of mix it up yeah. in the end game. Yeah. We thought that Mythic Plus was 
very successful. And things like the Mythic Dungeon in Invitational have yeah. shown that it's even a fun thing to watch this sort of competitive PVE environment. It's really fun to see players that like solo a Mythic 15 plus by themselves. Like that's super fun to watch. Uh, we don't have any plans for adding that to the rating system right now. Although we will continue with the Mythic Plus system, and we're changing up some of the modifiers uh, in Battle for Azeroth. But that's awesome feedback. We love oh. to hear that kind of feedback on the forums. That is that a <laughs> TM idea right there. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we, we love you know players going into any of our systems and saying, wow, this is a really cool system. Why don't you put it everywhere? Like, as a designer, that gives me the warm, fuzzy yeah, feeling, you know? Yeah, um, So I'm very emotionally attached to my guild. I've been in my guild since Mists of Pandaria. We get a guild house every year for BlizzCon. A lot of us are, like, friends and family in real life. Um, are there any plans to improve the guild experience in-game? Uh, like, maybe new guild perks or... or Can we talk a little bit about communities? <laughs> um... <sighs> We do have plans to expand uh, the sense of community in terms of making connections outside of your guild, because a lot of times you have people across servers uh, that you you know have kind of you know grew apart from, maybe because they, they did a server transfer to be closer to, to friends or to, to play in a different uh, region or whatever. But uh, um, the sense of communities is is kind of trying to look at kind of bringing connections between uh, people and those. Uh, uh, a lot of a lot of the great things about guild is it just being able to log in, chat chat with your friends or whatever. And community is kind of building on that and expanding that to be a, a larger group, so you can have communities that are kind of like a guild of guilds, right? So, um, in terms of like guild perks, we're not really um, ready to talk about anything along those lines, okay. but we are talking about building like the reach of your guild and being able to communicate with like-minded guilds to do similar activities. You mentioned your your rating group, for instance. I think that's a great thing where communi communities could help out and you know kind of like bring new people into those experiences. Oh, and it's like better than a pug in that sense because it's totally, like, oh, you're maybe yes. picking up a couple players, but they're players that you know. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. I had not thought about that. Um, it's just cool to be able to like talk to people that are playing other games all within the same shared space. So your guild, even if you know you're, somebody's playing Overwatch, somebody's playing Hearthstone, it can feel like your guild's never really broken up. You still yeah. have that same core group of people. Well, my guild, like we're all obsessed with each other. I swear to God, like we <laughs> play all different games together. We play Heroes of the Storm. That's and awesome. <clears throat> and you know so like I, I just anything that really expands upon that I think that's really to me what makes World of Warcraft is the people that you play with for sure um, now I'm pretty sure that it's already been announced that flying in Battle for Azeroth will be similar to previous expansions yep. but where my question comes in is I know that there's a lot of questing and there's a lot of like gameplay that involves the old continents as their you know horde or alliance now and those scenarios how will flying work there in which continent? like Eastern Kingdom and Kalimdor because there is Battle for Azeroth content there, mm -hmm. but like we'll still be able to fly there, right? It's not going to be like all of a sudden. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to get shot out of the sky <laughs> yeah. when you're going over Arathi if you don't own it. Actually, that's kind of a fun. That's idea. a really great <laughs> idea, actually. I love that. Kind of, kind of mean, maybe too mean. Okay, I. This is a question that I got overwhelmingly when I asked social media: mm -hmm. Is personal loot going to be forced on all raid difficulties? Uh, you know, I don't think that's within necessarily our wheelhouse of that's information. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. I, I personally don't care because I don't rate it a mythic <laughs> difficulty, but I understand why people who do like, mm -hmm. you know, DKP minus, mm -hmm. why they would be upset about it. And I mean, as with any change we make to World of Warcraft, you know, please give us your feedback. We're always reading the forums. We're always reading, you know, every kind of source of information we can get. We're making the game for the players. So maybe it's because I'm a lazy loot master. I'm always the loot master, and I get way <laughs> far behind, and I'm like. <laughs> Famous for getting lost in raids. We've done 8,000 times, mm -hmm. so it's like you always have to summon me because I'm distributing loot. I'm way far behind. Why they still let me be loot master? You ran off into a corner. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. Got what's killed by going something. On. Yeah, I took the wrong portal. You know. <laughs> um, next question all has to. All my next questions have to do with transmog. Okay. Now I know like shadow priests, their artifact like talks to them and whispers to them and stuff. Are there any plans for if players transmog those types of artifacts that they'll still kind of have those little on use cutesy things? You know, I'm not quite sure exactly which direction we want to go with that because the artifacts have their place in the storyline of Legion sure. and in some senses it doesn't make sense storyline wise to carry that forward beyond this outside of a cosmetic appearance so I think we're really going to have to take it on a case by case basis and see what feels cool. All right. Um, do you have any information about how Druid form transmogging is going to work? Because I know we've been told a million times Druids will still be able to use their forms that they earned. Is do we know how that is going to work maybe yet? 
We know it will work. <laughs> we know it will work. You heard uh, it here, we'll, 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 Yeah, we'll, sh we'll share more information, you know, as, as we're ready to share it. But uh, our, our plan is to get uh, those Druid forms to work. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so as somebody who really enjoys Transmog, which I know this is like one of those community things that's like split right down the middle, I really like Transmog. Are there any plans to increase the number of custom outfits that you can make? I like Transmog for every holiday. Mm -hmm. Like, it's big deal, okay? And it's I think there's only like 15 slots right now, which I guess seems like a lot, but it's not. I, I mean, the transmog system is still a little bit in its infancy, and that's one of those things where we want to make sure that we don't immediately open the floodgates so mm -hmm. that, you know, you've got a hundred different things, and then you, it's in, completely unable to parse which thing is which thing, yeah. and you don't use 90% of them anyway. We need to be very careful with it, but getting that kind of feedback is awesome, and we'd love to hear from the player base, you know, what, what do you feel is the right amount? Are we giving you too few, too many? That's great. All right. Last question on transmog is, is, does Battle for Azeroth plan to change any of the restrictions on transmog? Like, I know we'll be able to transmog, like, Legion legendaries, but, uh, for instance, like, daggers and swords or pole arms and stabs, I think those are already transmogable. But there's a few that feels like, like, for instance, I play a shaman, and I have to use a shield. But I play a resto shaman, so I don't, it feels weird to have a shield all the time. Like, I'd rather have a tome or an offhand. Are there any plans to, like, open up those restrictions a little bit? Uh, not that I know of at Bummer. this point, although it's, it, again, all that's really great feedback, and it's not to say that we can't do something like that in the future. All right. Um, okay, moving on to some other things. Uh, we saw that there will be golden-eyed blood elves. Will there be some sort of quest to explain the lore of that, or is it just like, bam, you got yellow eyes if you want them now? Uh, so the, the <laughs> quest to explain that actually happened way back in Sunwell Plateau, oh. when Anvina sacrificed herself to uh, cleanse the Sunwell, that's what caused the Blood Elves to finally lose their fell energy and gain these sort of golden eyes, and you start to see that a little bit with some of the Paladin and Priest Blood Elf NPCs that are going to be showing up in Battle for Azeroth, they'll have the golden eyes. Okay. And then of course the option, the customization option will be available for players because the storyline says that that's, that's, that's where they thing. should be now. But if you want to keep your green eyes because you're a Blood Elf Warlock and that feels right, you do you. That's great, and I loved when uh, we had the presentation a little earlier and Ian talked about how a huge focus has been continuing storylines mm -hmm. and maybe Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King weren't ones that got as continued as Warlords of Draenor or Legion will be, but I love that kind of throwback, like that kind of pulls that lore from then and is like, oh wait, this is still a thing, this is a story you did, it's all relevant, it's all the same It game. has an impact. Yeah, yeah, totally. I really like it. Um, okay, we know that Goblin and Morgan models will not be updated at the beginning of Battle for Azeroth, but is that plan for Battle for Azeroth's lifetime, like, you know, a patch 8.2 or 8.3 type thing, or is that way in the future? Yeah, I think right now we're kind of focused on allied races. We have, you know, a lot of interesting ideas to explore in that space right now uh, in terms of character customization, being able to provide characters some additional options along those lines. Um, so right now we're kind of focused on allied races. We'll think about maybe what makes sense after that. All right. It's hard to say what's going to come out when during BFA's lifetime because there are so many things we want to do. Like allied races in general has opened up the door oh, yeah. for a ton of different customization options that we just didn't have the, the option of doing before. Yeah. And so we're, I mean, we're going to have to really spend our time wisely here, but yeah, we want to do all the things. We want to <laughs> yeah, do sure. all of the That's things. That's accurate. <laughs> so I have main changed since allied races came out. Um, I always wanted to play a night elf, but I was whored, and that was just my mm -hmm. life. So I now play a nightborn. Sweet. She's a mage. I was a shaman for years and years and years, but I just feel like nightborn are very like magicy and whatever. So it made sense for her. And the most disappoint, probably the only disappointing thing for me is that she doesn't do front flips. <laughs> like one of the most satisfying things about playing a night elf is seeing how many you can get in a row when you're just like running around randomly. Mm -hmm. I think my, uh, I think I got like twelve one time, and that was very exciting. Wow. Well, but I know. But why impressive. can't nightborn do front flips? I th they're probably just you know a little too haughty, oh. a little too, uh. little too high, a little too high born. Too good for, for flipping. front flips. That's a so. night elf thing. They skip that day at the jumping class. <laughs> um, <laughs> they skip, skip leg, leg day. day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that I talked about, I did an interview uh, with a couple people maybe a month and a half ago, two months ago, and they had mentioned that in the future we may be getting custom dances or custom emotes for allied races, is this still something that's in the works or do you have an update for us? We don't have an update at this time. We think it's a super cool idea. Um, it's just one of those. I'm just saying, if I'm too good for, for front flips, I should be too good to do. <laughs> you should be too good to do that dance. That I, dance. I think it's like Jeremy <laughs> said, it's a matter of wanting to do all the things, right? All so, of the things. So. 
So I'm really excited to hear that we'll be keeping our fishing artifacts going into Battle for Azeroth. I really enjoyed that system a lot. I'm actually working on it on my mage now since I maxed out on my shaman, not playing her anymore, screw my shaman. Um, how will those talents translate into Battle for Azeroth? Are we still going to be able to turn into a fish in the water, or is that locked to Dran or, or Legion content? The Goodness. Broken Isles. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think we're quite ready to talk about what we want to do with fishing yet. All right. Uh, do, do you have any, like, hmm, how do I want to word this? Um, I personally really, really enjoyed how much different stuff there was to do with fishing. Mm -hmm. Are there plans to do stuff like that at all? Like, like you know, quest lines and reputation and stuff like that? Or is fishing just kind of getting... I guess I'm scared because you removed first aid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Fishing's I'm, not getting removed. Okay. <laughs> uh, though we're not really ready to talk about the future of what we're doing with professions in Battle for Azeroth. There's still just a lot of up in the air there. Well, I already said this. What, what, what was the deciding factor on removing first aid? Because when I started playing, I remember that was like a thing I was told. Like, you, you have to have first aid. Like, this is an important skill. Everybody has cooking. Everybody has first aid. You have to do the things. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, nope, no one's doing first aid anymore. That's so burning crusade. Like, what was the deciding factor on taking that profession out? I think the number of design spaces that overlapped with the design space of first aid. So back in the day, in classic WoW, I would take my mage out to kill elites out in Tyr's hand and frost, uh, barely survive by frost noving a guy and blinking away and bandaging myself because I didn't have any friends out there because it was three o'clock in the morning because <laughs> I was in college and <laughs> other stories. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but nowadays, classes have a ton of different self-healings, so we have a lot of consumables in the game, we've uh, put forth a large effort to try to make the world feel like it's this awesome toy that you can go out and find cool stuff and click on and eat and interactables and vehicles. There's so many different ways for your player to avoid damage. Mm -hmm. You also have a ton of different buttons now. I mean, back in the day I had Frost Nova. <laughs> now you've got how many different ways yeah. to stop a mob from attacking you. Uh, so how often do you really find yourself stopping and bandaging here? So then we started looking at, well, are there other things that we can add in here? Um, we tried at a certain point adding more things like anti-venoms, anti-venoms that are only usable in the outdoor world, spaces like that. And none of those quite felt right. They felt like uh, in some cases you're stepping on the toes of class abilities, or in other cases they're just not really usable by players. So it ended up just being one of those background things that maybe you leveled up because you had nothing better to do with your cloth, or you know whatever. Um, where we could take the core elements of that and spread them out to some of the other professions and ultimately have a stronger core of professions without every player kind of needing to worry about this extra thing and us needing to worry about, you know, what are we going to add? We're going to bandage this expansion pack. Is that interesting? Is that exciting? Not usually. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So my last questions are all, I don't know that I'd call them silly. I would call them selfish. Um, I'm a huge pet collector. I believe at this point I have like 894 unique pets. That's a solid number. Yeah, except Mine. there hasn't been an achievement since 600 in Mist of Pandaria. You are right. So we're going to be one in Battle for Azeroth. I made please. you ask the question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we do have plans to increase all of the collection achievements, everything from Bless. mounts to pets. <laughs> to uh, kind of all the different sub-elements, reputations, the stuff that we usually do. And we usually do those on major expansion pack launches, depending on whether or not we feel like we've added enough stuff. In the last expansion, um, we took a look at how many players had how many of certain types of pets, and it felt like we were still okay. We were on that line where we were oh, that means I'm way asking over. you to do a little <laughs> bit too much. Um, but then there's the Danielles of the world, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a lot of players have gotten up to the point where they're above 700, above 800. Yeah. Um, we, and we've just put so many new pets into the game uh, that it now feels like the right time, for sure. Yeah, I love uh, it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We'll make sure like, they have awesome rewards for yeah, you, Yeah, and too. I love that you added, like, the crazy cat lady title and oh, like, yeah. little things like that that just, like, encourage you to go do these silly little things like honestly world of warcraft got a little sillier as time went on mm -hmm. but in the best way like i love the pet battles and i love all the things you can collect and transmog added a whole nother layer of collecting and then the toy tab ate it, like all of these little things that you can do that aren't as i'm gonna go pvp mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get honor and I think rest assured, as long as Jeremy is on the team's pets, we'll get the full attention of the, the World attention. of Warcraft development team. And that's one of the fun things about working on, we just came off of this huge battle against the Legion, right? Mm -hmm. It was very serious, and Taurus is a very serious place. We get to have a little bit of fun in Battle for Azeroth. We get to go to great big dinosaur the mother cities. Load. <laughs> there's the mother load, there's Crapopolis. Uh, there is a trash Loa that is oh, a amazing. hilarious that's little amazing. sorry guy that's that amazing. looks awesome. Yeah. 
it, we're having a lot of fun, and you can rest assured that that's going to translate into stupid pet ideas. Yes. So there will <laughs> we are going to see some new pet because I love the pet battle dungeons. There's been more of that, so we will see some updates to like pet battling as well. For sure. Uh, so Great. we have some pet battle updates planned. We're definitely continuing the pet battle world quest system. You'll find cool new pets scattered all around the two new continents. The new cats are awesome. The new chickens are awesome. We've got ferrets okay. now. <clears throat> that are super adorable. Let me, this is a question I have asked every interview I've done for probably <laughs> the past two years. There's no ducks in World of Warcraft. That's true. But what's very strange about it to me is that there is the rubber duck bobber. Mm -hmm. So Azeroth is aware that ducks exist. There just aren't any. So was there like a duck genocide? Like what happened to the ducks? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? It really makes me wonder a lot. Like are they going to show up one day? Like what happened to the ducks? <laughs> they know there's ducks. But they're not there. So a lot of stories left to tell in World of Warcraft. That's true. Really big major duck related story arcs. That would be the best thing ever. This should be your April Fool's Day joke next year. It's like a duck a duck dungeon or World something. World of Warcraft has to have some mysteries. Aw, oh, that's not a good one. We want ducks. <laughs> give me ducks or give me death. Uh, before I wrap this up, is there anything else you guys want to talk about briefly before we go? So that, I don't know, if you have a little tidbit of information you want to share or uh, we're really excited about what we're doing with Battle for Azeroth. Uh, we're really excited about you know what our players have been have been telling us uh, about their excitement level, and yeah, we're just ready to, to get it out into people's hands and um, and go from there. August fourteenth. August fourteenth. There's a lot of cool new things in BFA that we're very excited about. There's a lot of cool new technologies that allow us to do neat stuff with World of Warcraft in general, things like the advanced AI and how it plays through the gameplay space. I mean, you just go on the forums and you say, hey, what could you do that's cool with these neat bots? And you will get a hundred different ideas. And that's yeah. a fun space to be in for us. Um, one of the things that we haven't talked a whole lot about is that we also have a brand new Weather 2.0 system coming oh, in. Oh, really? And you'll start to see that uh, coming online with more final art as of this latest today's that alpha was the build. thing in like vanilla, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Or early beta or something. And it was dark and you needed torches and weather well, has been the same for a while. Yeah, it is it has remained largely untouched for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And working with our, our team and 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 Jeremy here, uh, we kind of came together and one of the things we wanted to get done with islands was, you know, part of this diversity is being able to go in and see the same island, but maybe there's a rainstorm there and not just a rainstorm, but maybe a thunderstorm and flashes of lightning and things like that. So oh my gosh. We, we kind of went back and, and looked at what the weather system in WoW was currently doing, what it's maybe some of its limitations were, and we decided to just, you know what, let's just build this thing from the ground up, mm -hmm. uh, give it uh, give a lot more control over to the artists so that they can uh, make as wacky a weather as they want, uh, add thunder and lightning. Uh, add pets that are only available in rainy weather. I thought okay. you were going to say add pets I was that rain. drop as the weather. <laughs> <laughs> we it's actually, we cats actually and dogs. literally <laughs> gave them enough control that they could rain cats and dogs we if can. they wanted, yep. so they can actually do or that ducks. now. Or well, no. Oh, it's super cool <laughs> technology, though. Uh, it it takes our weather into a space where it actually feels like it's coming at your camera. You can walk through it. It can come in from the distance it and hit so you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, weather is one of those things in any game that you immediately notice, right? As soon yeah. as it starts to rainstorm and the trees start moving and like things get really dark and, and, and the, the music changes, all that awesome stuff oh, that you wow. see, we wanted to get into World of Warcraft. And you're gonna see it on islands when invasions occur closer to the end of an island, you're going to get this third force that recognizes that you've gathered all this Azurite and their eye turns to you. Oh, interesting. Um, so, and a lot of those different invasions use the new weather technology in wacky ways. For example, if you have fire elementals that invade, a firestorm shows up and oh, you've got wow. these actual cinders that are coming at your screen and then from all over the place. In the <laughs> <laughs> if the earth elemental shows up, yes, you get sandstorm, <laughs> right? Um, but the sandstorm's like coming from a direction and it's it's not the little particles of specks anymore. It's actually like arted up sand oh, that's wow. coming at you. It looks really cool. Oh, We've got so when the cool. old god minions show up, a void storm starts. That looks rad. Oh, like, I'm sure it does. So we're really looking forward to people's feedback. It's super cool Oh, and I can't cool wait to technology. see like the potion of inky darkness with the weather, uh -huh. or like that Draenor totem with the weather. Oh, it's uh, oh it's boy. not just limited to the islands either. So mm -hmm. every single weather system in the game, whether it's Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor as well, like everything gets great. Get, yep, That's everyone. so exciting. You, you get new you weather. You like get new weather. Yeah. The fog of Nazmir. It can actually feel like you're in this foggy swamp where the fog is moving around you. Super oh, cool wow. stuff. That's weather 2.0. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yeah, we sure. really appreciate it. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.